All right. What is going on, guys? This is Jim. Um, hopefully you've been watching some of my other Let's Play videos. I thought I would jump into Ghost Recon Wildlands because I noticed a lot of differences between Wildlands and Breakpoint, and I didn't really talk about them because I was so in love with Wildlands. I'm sorry, Breakpoint, <laughs> the new one, <laughs> that I went back to Wildlands, and it's still fun. But now that I've played the new one, there's a lot of stuff that I'm glad they made some good design choices on. So this is the very first mission of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Um, I just started this character. As a matter of fact, I've never played on the PlayStation before. Um, I only played on the uh, computer, and that's where I've pretty much maxed out the game. Done every possible thing, completely destroyed all of the generals got every single gun every single upgrade every single mission every everything so i feel like i know this game very 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 well but i didn't really talk about the differences and now that i'm playing console to console i can point out some of the things that i noticed that i think are going to make you be a big fan of tom clancy number one but see some of the love and care that ubisoft has continued to put into this franchise moving on so the biggest difference off the bat you'll notice here is that i have a squad of three computer controlled characters that follow me around at all times and emulate exactly what i'm doing this is cool if you are playing with human people and your human friends are talking you through missions and you're working together as a team this is not so great when you're playing with the computer because the AI in this game is not that great. Keep in mind in this game, um, you are sent in this, you know, essential third world country of um, going and taking out this crime syndicate. You are armed to the teeth. You have full body armor. You have suppressors, flash grenades. You have drones. You have noisemakers. You have access to a lots and lots of technology. And you're going to be going up against dudes like this. Just standing there smoking a cigarette. You know, no armor. No idea what's going on. Absolutely zero situational awareness on anything. And all of his friends, which are scattered throughout um, this particular area. This is just, you know, the starting mission, and I'm just going to do a little bit just to show you guys, you know, this is the difference. When you go up against, oops, drone's going out of range. When you're going up against guys like this playing soccer without a shirt on, I don't think this dude has a gun. Let's see if I could get up a little bit closer and see. No, he didn't even have a gun. Going up against Cole Walker and the Wolves of Aurora, how much more of a threat those guys are in that game as opposed to this game and this is a great game to sink your teeth into a tom clancy game no doubt about it but you're meant to feel like a badass because you are a badass you're going to be able to pretty much have your way with anybody on this island i'm sorry this isn't an island anywhere anybody in this content without any issue at all you're always going to be one step ahead of the enemy you're never going to get caught because you're a badass and not only that you have three other badasses when they're not being goofy. I don't know what this guy's doing. I said the AI is a little wonky. Uh, you have three other badasses who are going to be helping you out on your adventure. So that's the first major, major difference is just the magnitude of the crisis. You never will feel like you are on the back burner here. Okay. Now, the AI does serve a pretty cool purpose, and you can do this with your friends. Or you can do this alone. This is the sync shot, which I didn't see them talk about in the new Ghost Recon. I'm sure it's there for multiplayer, but for single player, it goes like this. I'm going to go ahead and mark this guy. And you'll see a little carrot go over his head. And in the uh, lower right-hand corner, he says it's, you'll see it say, sync shot ready. So now, my character has a bead on him. I don't know from where. Again, the AI is a little wonky. Hopefully it's this guy here. This guy's not even ready to take a shot. The other guy, I don't know what he's doing. What's going to happen is when I pull the trigger on my target, all other sync targets are going to get shot simultaneously. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot, and you'll see what happens. Just like that. Instant kill. And you can upgrade this ability. That's going to allow you to, you know, um, do more, more sync shots, up to four, obviously, you being the fourth one. 
the AI will always shoot on your target, you know, uh, on your shot rather. Or you can just say, just shoot now if you just want to have fun and let them basically beat the game for you. They'll also mark enemies too. They'll also identify when um, a threat is close that you haven't identified. The real uh, run of this game is basically find a place to get in the cover, pop out your drone, zoom up, look around, make sure you're marking everybody and everything in the vicinity, and execute a battle plan to, you know, take out the bad guys. And that's really how this game is played. Now, a big difference, again, comparing this to Breakpoint, is in Breakpoint, you are basically a lone wolf, you are on an island alone, you are not prepared for what is coming your way, you are cut off, essentially, from your team, from your supplies, everything like that. That's the sense they want you to feel in this game. Not this, like, oh, you know, we're going to go out for a Sunday, a Sunday afternoon drive and just basically pick off guys who have no idea what's about to hit them. You'll see the other thing that just happened there. Um, you might have heard my AI character uh, implement something. This is something I was not a big fan of, of this game at all. Is the fact that, look where my target... Okay, so keep in mind, there's Midas up there, 31 meters ahead of me. We have my other teammates pretty far back. Uh, Weaver's 30 meters behind me, and Holt is 40 meters off that way. And one of them, I wasn't sure on the voice, popped up and said, hey, I see something. Look where this target is that they found. 125 meters through some tree cover, down around a house patrolling. You're telling me, even Midas, even if Midas had found it from right there, okay? Look at Midas' field of view. What does he see? Even if he walked up to this point, there's no way he's going to see that target. This was so frustrating in this game because it constantly broke the immersion. When you have your AI who's just basically programmed to, in a general vicinity, random targets, not only was he able to identify that that was a target, he was able to identify that that was a target with an SMG. Very, very, very confusing. Something that I was not a big fan of in this game, and something that I think is extremely immersion-breaking. So, and you'll have that throughout the entire game. You can fiddle with the difficulty settings and try to change, basically, how these characters interact, and you can try to make them, you know, be a little less chatty by putting it on more difficulty. But the truth is, you're going to get stuff like that no matter what. And that is extremely frustrating. So um, I'm going to sneak up on this guy here and interrogate him, and then I'll show you the next part of the uh, mission that I wasn't a big fan of. So we're going to go ahead and interrogate this guy over here. And pretty cool little cutscene here. <laughs> Look at this. This is really cool, right? There we go. All right. So you interrogate people in this game, and I'm not really sure if this uh, mechanic made its way to breakpoint or not. But you essentially will interrogate people, and uh, what will happen is they'll give you locations of things to do around the world, and that's actually how you start to uncover the world map. I mean, you'll see here that there is a King Slayer file, which is some background story information. But there might be other stuff around here. There might be weapon caches in the vicinity. There might be skill points. There might be side missions to partake. We don't know. I mean, we could walk around and find them, but we don't know. So what you could do is you can find these lieutenants, like this guy back here, and you can interrogate him, and he or she will tell you, hey, what do you want to know? And you can select on the map something you're interested in, and what they'll do is they will... Um, they'll basically fill in the gaps for you and they'll basically help you to fill in the map, which is really cool. I like that. Um, the one big difference though that I have seen and despite the fact that the AI is really goofy on your team 
and the fact that you're going up against, you know, guys like this. <laughs> we'll go laugh at these guys because they're about to get wrecked. I mean, this guy again. I think this guy's a gun. Oh, there he goes. He pulled out a little SMG or something. Um, the fact that you're going up against this in, you know, a full army mode, you, you know, there's no chance, right? You're going to smoke these guys, absolutely. Um, what I don't like is the fact that there are people that are just civilians in this world. Now, I get it. The idea is that you're in a, you know, basically a country that has been taken over by a very corrupt cartel. So there are civilians, like down there in that white sedan, just driving around, trying to live their life. I find it weird that they don't seem to be mi mindful or bothered by the fact that there's people standing here with guns walking around. I don't understand that. And they'll just essentially ignore them. And it's like their programming is like, oh, whatever, like, it's okay. Like, this is a day in a life. And I, I guess from the standpoint of, you know, if you were in a war-torn country and you were having, you know, this was happening to you, I guess you would try to live your life. I don't know. It just seems really, really odd. And because of this, it does, in my opinion, break a lot of the immersion, especially when, once you realize how stupid the uh, people are. Let's see if he's going to see me. Oh, he didn't see me. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you, they just the fact that they just drive around and they're like, oh, okay, that's cool. A lot of times they'll get out of their car and run away if they're scared, or they'll try to hit you or run over, whatever. But then like their AI turns off after a second and they just walk away as if nothing's wrong. Let's go see if this guy does it or he runs. Probably gonna make a bad example of me. This guy's going to hide. That's a little different. A lot of times you get into these situations where the AI just doesn't seem to mind that like a war is going on. And I'm not kidding you, you'll be in a shootout with people and you'll have AI, other AI, human AI, not human AI, like a civilian AI rather, walking through the gunfight, totally oblivious to what's going on. I don't know if it was something like a programming error from Ubisoft and they had a hard time putting it together and they just said, ah, well, whatever, we'll just throw them in there or what. But this game, I think, would have been fine without having people. If it was like, hey, the cartel's taken over. Kind of like what you saw Ubisoft do with Far Cry 5. They said, okay, everyone who's alive and is left in this town is crazy and deserves to die. They are all part of this cult together, and they should all be basically systematically taken out together. That kind of stuff, I guess, I could understand a little bit better, and I feel like that design decision to go in that direction really, really made a big difference. Um, how their folk walk around sucks. And I'm glad that from what I've seen in Breakpoint, that is no more. Let's go ahead and finish out this mission. What happened to this car? I don't know why it's all shot up. It wasn't for me. Gonna take a clean ride here. Now you do get a lot of nice, like, fill in the gap kind of stuff because this is a giant map this map is ginormous and very brief let's go ahead and zoom out and just show you just how big we're talking um this is the area that i'm in right now look at all these other areas to explore fully rendered houses missions captains everybody that needs to be taken out here there's a lot of people a lot of people a lot of missions i mean i wouldn't say this is like in scope of like Origins or Odyssey, I wouldn't say it's as big as that, but for a third person tactical shooter, you will not run out of things to do. I easily logged over 300 hours, easy, in, uh, whoa, in Costa Recon on the computer when I basically, you know, beat the game 100% of it. Um, and you'll just have lots of stuff to do. Now, what uh, the point I was trying to make is that y the map is ginormous, so you're going to have a lot of modes like this where you're driving around. Even if you're taking a helicopter, um, it's still going to take you a while to get from point A to point B. And typically, your AI will chime in and talk a little bit to you. And that's kind of what helps pass the time. They'll talk to you about the mission they're going on. They'll make jokes to each other. They'll, you know... Your standard, like, buddy, you know, your bro kind of discussions, you know, about how tough they are and all the crazy things that they've done and their feelings on the missions, that sort of thing. And it does help the time pass by. So in that sense, I appreciate that they are around. And, um, you know, the dialogue thankfully doesn't seem to, uh, oops, I think that lady just got wrecked. 
the dialogue doesn't seem to copy over on itself or uh, get too cumbersome. It makes sense what's going on. They do comment on the missions that you've been doing and the missions you're about to be doing. So I feel like there was a lot of thought put into that, and it does give those characters a little more weight, particularly when you find out the fate of some of them going into um, Breakpoint, which is cool. However, um, a lot of times that I think is over, it kind of counteracted with the bizarre AI glitching that you see on the moment to moment mission when you're trying to be stealthy. So we'll go ahead and pull up here. Make a big mess of everything. Okay. We know how to do stealth now. Thank you. So very similar to, um, you know, how, how the other Tom Clancy games are. It's going to put a, basically like a ring around an area to tell you that there are enemies in the area that you need to be mindful of. Why that drone broke, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Baby makes three. You'll hear that a lot in this game. There's five or six people. They're basically holding a guy hostage inside this um, this barn. I agree that some of these people are well-armed. I'm not saying that they're not. Um, however, I don't know. They just don't really seem like they pose much of a threat, and and I think you'll see that we're gonna we're gonna take them up pretty handled. Stealth is a big part of this game, just like the other Tom Clancy game. They want you to basically take your time, and you know, pick your shots, pick your targets, use the skill shots to your advantage, take out the low hanging fruit targets, so to speak and kind of work your way through the map. Now, this guy seems to have detected me, the guy in the white shirt off to the left. He seems to think that something's up. He's looking around. All the other guys are looking around, but they lose interest very, very quickly. And I think that's something that I'm looking forward to in um, the next game, where I feel like the wolves are supposed to be a little more aggressive. So we'll see if that's actually true or not. We'll see if the wolves really do um, basically, like, pursue you as much as they say they do. Where you're constantly on edge, and, you know, you, you are the, you know, you're not the hunter, you're the hunted kind of thing. We'll see. Because these guys don't put up much of a threat, even one-on-one -on -one in these skirmishes. How, di how, how well armed you are, how much better your guns are compared to theirs. The fact that you basically just walk in and shoot. There's really not a lot of fear here, honestly. I don't think so. I mean, now I know they're on the map. I can just walk into this guy, basically, and shoot him without issue. And he's got... Oh, I guess I didn't kill him. I say that and I'll get killed, right? <laughs> Your AI will take care of most of the targets for you, whichever ones you don't. And, okay. Weapon upgrades, I'm not entirely sure how they're handled so far in Breakpoint, but here in Wildlands, they appear as crates on the map. You can um, basically find them by using the drone... Or you can um, interrogate generals and, you know, like officials to try to get, um, you know, clues into where they're on the map. It's great because you'll find a bunch of stuff around the world. You'll find different sorts of attachments and um, you'll find different types of scopes and sights and guns. You kind of never know what you're going to get. Um, and it's fun. A lot of them are directly tied to missions. So the mission will take you in a very particular area, and then they'll say, oh, okay, now that you're basically doing the mission, uh, not a problem, you know, we'll just put something nearby. So you'll get access to a lot of stuff kind of naturally just by playing the game. Um, but if you want to go off on your own and kind of just do your own thing, you absolutely can without problem. And just interrogating generals, you'll find enough stuff on your own. So we're going to go ahead and take the helicopter to beat this last little part. Then I'll wrap up this video. Uh, the last big difference, I think... Oh, you guys want to get in? You know, it doesn't matter. You'll just teleport to the helicopter. Um, yep, they changed the helicopter controls after about a year of gameplay. So I like both old and new. It doesn't bother me. All right. Uh, last big thing I want to talk to you guys... Did he not get in the helicopter? Oh, my God. That's so funny. Oh my god, he didn't get in the helicopter. Amaru, the one guy needed. I thought he was in. <laughs> well, that was lame. What? Really? 
it should just put me back outside the camp. And I could talk to you guys about the last little piece. That's pretty dumb. I saw he was standing right next to me. And I saw that the two, my two squad mates were in the helicopter. But I don't care about them. Hey, we're here to rescue you. Get in the helicopter. He just stands there and watches you fly away. And then the mission just insta-fails. <laughs> yeah, the last big difference as I kind of rush through this last little part again is that um, there are a lot of waypoints hidden on this map and basically these safe houses that have been set up. These uh, different shacks that you're going to have access to um, throughout the world. And how these little shacks work is that they're basically places where you get missions, that's where your handler is, a lot of the missions requiring you to bring a target back will actually be placed, uh, you know, it'll be one of those safe houses. They also serve as fast travel points throughout the map. Now, I don't know if they're going to be doing the same thing in uh, Breakpoint. It seems like they're just going to force you into that kind of central hub area and that's going to be it. And then you're going to use your bivouac and that's going to be your primary mode of basically you know upgrades and everything like that but the fact that they're putting um the fact that they're putting this in the game is cool that this the, i mean in, in wildlands is cool i feel like because it was such a big break from some of the other ghost recon games and just the magnitude of the world i feel like it kind of made sense for a first game to kind of get you accustomed to you know the magnitude and the scope of what you were doing and i feel like now going forward now that you know we're all kind of like we've played through this game and we understand it i feel like them taking a very big different very wild direction uh in the new game where you're going to basically be on your own and there's not going to be all these like safety houses i think is a natural progression of things and it's something that i'm i'm really really happy about i'm excited that um I'm excited that they decided to do that. And I think it's going to make for some more tense gameplay. We'll see. We will see. The one guy out here somewhere. Did you buy another car? Run behind here, maybe? There he is. That's what I mean about these, like, you know, this extreme military faction. He's, you know, he's, he's got his best men here. Does he really? Like, these guys... These guys don't even just, I don't know, systematically just melting these guys down. All right, let's go ahead and open the locker. And this time, let's go ahead and get this dude on the helicopter this time. Make sure he gets on before we fly away. Don't fail the mission again. All right, let's wait for him to come on in. Do I have to hold his hand? Is that what I not, did I not do that last time? Dude, we opened the cell and got you out. Here's what I'm talking about. It's world-class AI. It drives me bananas in this game. Hey. Yes, come out this door and go this way. Follow me. Are you coming? Okay, he's limping. He's a little hurt. Okay, I get it. He got beat up. You know, give him a chance. But, I mean, clearly, like, we're here to save you. Like, take some initiative. <laughs> okay, let's let him get in the helicopter. All right, he is in the helicopter, and we are taking off again this time to go drop him off. And as we fly through, you'll get to see some of the scope and the magnitude of this world, which is really, really, really big. Um, a lot of these mountains and stuff, unfortunately, there's not a lot to do here, and this mostly serves as just kind of basically natural breaks between some of the biomes, but... Uh, you can see down there's a lot of houses, there's a lot of like small towns and villages and military settlements that are ripe for exploration and ripe for, um, you know, just basically losing yourself in the world. To get ready to land, there is one last thing that just came to my mind that I am not a big fan of, and that is the fact that there's actually your normal, your ghost faction, you know, your four dudes. Um, you're going up against, you know, the rebels and this whole force of those guys I just killed. There's also this third police force, we'll just call them that, that are kind of neutral in both engagements, and they'll just shoot anybody on sight. And again, back to my big criticism about the really broken AI, um, they will pick fights with you at the worst time. And a lot of the story missions will have you interacting with them or near them while you're trying to do other things, and they just don't go away. 
think of like when you're playing Grand Theft Auto and you have to basically, um, you know, you have to go through a mission and you get that like five star like difficulty. I'm just going to blow through all this. You don't care. Um, you get that five star difficulty and like the, every cop in the world is coming at you and they're not stopping and it's just getting more and more annoying. That's pretty much what this third force will do. So I haven't seen anything yet on Breakpoint discussing whether or not there is going to be other people on the island, other factions or groups of people that are basically, um, you know, out there to kind of get you to. I sure hope not because that would be really annoying. And I really want to fall in love with the idea that we are just lone wolves. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But until then, to tide you over, you know, um, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff, Wildlands is still a phenomenal game. I think after playing through some of, um, you know, Breakpoint, I realized there's a lot of stuff that Wildlands doesn't do as good as I'd hoped it did. But it's still a ton of fun. And if you're jonesing for a tactical shooter like this, you know, you're going to get some really cool weapons and you get to get to have some really fun stealth missions. Look no further than Ghost Recon Wildlands. I guarantee you guys when Breakpoint comes out next week, I will absolutely be playing and streaming a ton of it. I cannot wait. But until then, I'll probably just be putzing around with this just to get my fill. With that, I'm going to close out this video. Hope you guys found this comparison and contra uh, contrast. Contrastion. <laughs> this compare and contrast between Breakpoint and Wildlands is beneficial. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about anything Tom Clancy. Take care of yourselves, and until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.